great. Japan seems to be obsessed with robots and AI. Why is that? And how will this tech impact our future? I took a plane to find out more. When I came across this machine on YouTube a couple of years ago, I was absolutely thrilled. The video featured a so-called powered exoskeleton. In short, a variable machine that increases the strength of limb movements. The machine looked like the perfect working tool of the future to me. Apart from that, it reminded me of one of my favorite science fiction movie moments ever. Actress Sigourney Viva as Ripley fights the monster in the final scene of Aliens from 1986 with a robotic suit called Power Loader. But science fiction aside, robotic suits are already today shaping the workplaces of tomorrow. One of the most widespread fears about robots is that they steal our jobs. But robotics could also empower us to do things we couldn't do before. I'm on my way to visit the company that created the suit in the video. They're based in the city of Nara, about an hour's drive south of Kyoto. Doesn't look very futuristic here. But the company Arteun is working on the future of physical labor. Arteun is a play on words and means robots and people. The company is designing exoskeletons for work and rehabilitation purposes. And they promised me I get to try one out today. Good day. Surprise number one. This was the only time a Japanese person dared to greet me in German. Good day. Our host Keiko Fukui works at Atun as a mechanic. For Japanese standards, that's anything but normal. Employment rates for women are very low, especially in technical jobs. Atun seems to be an exception. Six of its 21 employees are women. Surprise number two. There it is, right at the entrance, the machine from the video. It is called NEO. And the company seems to be very proud of this one. NEO is a very powerful machine. It's still in development, so it would have been too dangerous for me to try and walk in it. But hey, at least I was allowed to steer one arm. And I still got to feel a little bit like in the movie Aliens. Oh, it's really easy. With this arm, I could lift about 50 kilograms. And 50 with the other as well. What would you use this machine for? Let me know in the comments. Neo directly translates human movement into machine movement and exponentially enhances the power behind the performed action. 26 kilos. I'm a superhuman. Most robotic arms are steered with a kind of control pad and they have been around for quite some time. But concepts like NEO have new advantages. They offer freedom of movement and enable its wearer to perform tasks more intuitively and also more precisely. This mechanic is NEO's official test driver. For now, all of the suit's movements are adjusted precisely to his body. Another reason why it would have been nearly impossible for me to control the whole machine. He can re actually steer the whole thing with one finger, so it's fine-tuned extremely well. Impressive. But what's the big vision behind robotic suits like NEO? While NEO is still very hard to balance and has to be head mounted for now, Atun is also working on concepts that can be moved around without limits. Like the so called Project L that you can see here. So, we just have to combine this with that and we get this. Okay, enough science fiction for today. In real life, Atun's robotic suits are intended to help workers with tasks that are physically challenging. The so-called Model Y is already in use. Let's see what it feels like to wear one. Seems to fit. Ooh. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. So here's how it works. The suit basically reads its user's movements with the help of sensors. When the user is about to lift something, two motors are activated and give back support with a light mechanic impulse. 
exactly in the moment when the movement is the most difficult. Here's what the suit sounds like. Ah, yes. Did you hear it? And again. You can tell by the sound of it that the mechanical impulse is not very strong. But it really does make lifting things a lot easier. One question though. If a certain type of work is too heavy for humans, why not let machines do it in the first place? Actually, robotic suits can help with very human problems. They can help people to regain their natural strength in rehabilitation therapy, for example. They might one day even help those who can't move on their own at all. And they can support people working in elderly care. My impression from today. The idea of cyborg-like human workers with superhuman powers might sound frightening, but robotic suits really have the potential to make some aspects of human life more humane. Okay. This seems to be a cat robot, but why doesn't it have a head? And do we need robotic pets? Find out in the next episode of Robots Like Me.